Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is fantastic to have you here because we are working on a rapier. Now that's a long sword, it's a stabbing sword, and it needs a basket or a swept hilt to which we have forged in yesterday's episode. I hope you've been following along. I hope that if you're new here, you go ahead and you, you hit subscribe because that's what it's all about. It's about hitting things with a hammer. You got a problem, you hit it with a hammer. You don't find good content on YouTube, you hit that subscribe button with a hammer. So make sure you do that. We're going to get straight into this. As you remember the closing of the last episode, not only did I promote the awesome merch that we have on the website, alexealshop.com, but I said that we would be cleaning these areas here for us to TIG weld them, for us to then go back in the forge, for us to refine the shape on all of these tines of the basket hilt. And so the first step, we're going to go straight into the grinding room. We're going to use an angle grinder, very carefully clean the material so it's ready for some TIG welding. So let's get straight to that. So the whole premise of what I'm doing here is I'm cleaning everywhere where we're going to be welding, all around the diameter of the piece that we're going to be welding. I'm not very good at TIG welding, and uh, TIG welding dirty metal is difficult, and so not only am I going to just struggle with the control of it anyway, but if there's any dirt and impurities in there, I'm going to really struggle with it. And so I've been using uh, one of these little uh, tools here with the little abrasive, uh, abrasive rolls that you get like 10 seconds use out of them, as well as a file to just clean up everything so that when we go to weld it, it's all clean and neat. TIG welding, it wants the cleanliness, it wants the neatness, so that's going to be a lot of help. And uh, frankly, while I had been forging this, I had been thinking to myself, man, imagine making that in Damascus. Imagine how difficult it would be to polish it. Imagine making one of the rapiers that was made 400 years ago, and how difficult it would have been to polish the, uh, the basket hilts on those from the forge finish. And actually, just as I've spent about five minutes doing some polishing here with a file and with sandpaper and what have you, it's actually kind of taught me something that really, to get one of these things polished, all you would have to do is apply the appropriate amount of time. Thankfully, we're not going for the polished finish, so I don't need to spend the four days that are needed on it, but we're going to make sure that we are ready for welding, so we're going to take just a few more seconds, a uh, few more minutes of work here, and we're going to be straight to the welder. <laughs> So here we go, we've got the bits that we need polished up. We're going to be able to clamp the pieces together, tack them, get rid of the clamps, finish the welds. We're going to be welding here, here, and here. Then, a little bit of grinding, and then some forging. They should be, uh, they should be all ready and done. Right, so I've gone ahead and, uh, and ground the pieces, and I'm just heating these up to stress relieve it, to make sure there are no stresses in it when we weld it into this position. So when I remove this clamp, hopefully it won't spring back too far. I think that's part of why it broke. I think it's also because it was a heat affected zone, which you've heard me describe um, a while ago. Again, I'm no welder, but uh, we're gonna TIG weld that piece back up and then work on the next pieces. But what we'll do is I think I'll get all the pieces tacked before then going back in the forge, heating up the, uh, the back end of the splines, stress relieving them, and then finishing the welds, and going easy on the welds. Less is more.
This one side here is a little bit longer, so we're just gonna file it down to length. We're now gonna make sure that this little eye here is perfectly centered with, uh, with where the tang goes through, or the blade rather. Okay, looks square. We're good. Time for us to heat this up so that we can oxidize it. Maybe even hammer on it a little bit so that we have a consistent finish the whole way. The ground finishes and the oxide finishes just wouldn't work. So this is gonna help us out. I need to be very careful, however, because I don't want to be dinging things too much. What I might well do, there are some kinks in some of these bends. So it might also be necessary once it's hot to just come in and give it a clamp with a pair of tongs just to even out all the bends, tweak any things that need to be tweaked. For now, however, we're gonna be turning the forges way down low. Maybe a little hotter than that, less low. And in we go! And there we go, it's been oxidized. I'm very happy with that. A coat of oil is gonna do wonders to it. Give it a nice kind of deeper, blacker finish. It's gonna be fabulous. For now, however, I gotta think about what comes next. Hmm. Right, so this here is our sword. There's that little uh, protrusion there. Here is the start of our tang, which obviously tapers down a long way. Here is the guard that we've just made, and this is the jumble of my attempt at drawing it. This, this is why I struggled so much because I didn't even know how to draw it. But we, we did actually get there. We still need to do the final fit up, but I also want to find an interesting way to transition from the guard into the handle. And I want to make a very nice handle. And I think that transitioning the handle straight into the guard might not be so ideal. So maybe. What if there was a way that we could very gently and subtly transition not only from the forged texture, which is rough and crusty and oxidized steel, but also transition in size from the three quarters of an inch in diameter to the larger diameter that we're gonna need to start the handle. What if we started that tapering out and slowly transitioned into maybe some interesting Damascus and then into the handle? Mmm, now that's an idea. So we've got this piece forged out, and my idea with it is this right here. Right where my touch mark is, is gonna be our forged material. We have a little bit of a shoulder, and I've made that shoulder to hopefully allow us to be able to grind it and go to a ground finish above or below the touch mark for that nice transition. Now, obviously, this is not a bar of Damascus. I had a piece of Damascus, the off cut from when we did our ferry flip. I had that, and I was putting it in the saw, getting ready to cut it, and I said to myself, you know what, am I really about to do this with my design. Damascus blade, beautiful forged guard, forged bit, Damascus, elaborate handle. We're gonna be talking about that some more in the future. Pommel, like, I mean, am I, am I gonna have Damascus forged, then Damascus again with a transition from forged to Damascus? And then what, maybe Damascus at the other end? I think it's just too much Damascus on the piece. Instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this normal steel and our ground finish is not gonna be shiny, but I think you'll understand why it is that I'm going this route when you see what we're gonna be doing for the handle. It's not gonna be shiny. We're gonna have it transition from forged metal to black oxide, cold blue finish as it transitions into the handle. And I think that's gonna work really well. We're then gonna do a cold blue on the pommel, which is gonna be a machined pommel. I think that this is going to work rather lovely. So we're gonna go into the bandsaw. Now it's cold, we're gonna make two cuts. One here. There we go, and we'll then move her forwards and make a second cut far, far, far further away than we need it. So we have a little bit of holding on material. 
And there we go. It's now on to the grinding room. Right, so as you can see, we're back in the forge and we're hammering on it again, which is really difficult. We're at risk of having to start over. So what happened is, is as I was grinding, I didn't have enough of a change in dimension to be able to keep enough forged material before the ground material. And see, it's a risk because we want it to look intentional. We don't want it to look like a mistake. We want it to look like it's intentional to go from forge material to ground material. We don't want the transition to be so close to the end of the piece that it's like, hang on a second, is that just rough grinding? What it needs to be is it needs to be an intentional part of this piece. And so we're here back at the anvil giving a little more taper and hammering out the fish mouths. Hopefully we get it to work because otherwise we just got to make another piece, which isn't the end of the world. But, you know, it, it'd be quite nice to be able to get it done with this piece. Of course, we've smushed the touch mark, but that's fine. We'll be able to put the touch mark back in and without too much damage. But like this, we've got a much more aggressive taper. So I think that when we go to our ground material, we're gonna be able to make it look a lot more intentional. It's a tough one when you're trying to make art, because oftentimes when you're trying to be creative, it's very easy to uh, forget about the craft or allow the craft to become forgotten in the making of the art piece. And you know, I, I can't let that happen. This is, this is all about the craft. It's all about the love of making and getting better at making. We can't completely abandon every single bit of our desire to make good things and intentional things and control the process as opposed to letting the process control the end result. So we've hammered out a lot of our touch mark. This might have to start again. If it does, it does. Let's try and put the touch mark back in. Let's see if that'll work. Right, so now it is time for us to have a look and see how it looks with the hilt. You know, I'm really not so happy with that. It is a little too wide here, and it goes past that nice little flat spot that we have on the hilt. That's not good. We're gonna have to start again. One of the other issues I had with our first one there is we didn't have an appropriate enough taper. Didn't taper enough. So on this particular piece, in our preform, on all the material that's gonna be cut off, what we've gone ahead and done, we've reduced it enough that we now have a, uh, a clearance, so to speak, for an angle of taper. It means we're gonna hold a tapered angle, hold an angle for a taper, rather, and actually forge a taper into this first little forged bit before we transition into the ground material, which will also taper out. I'll take some calipers, 26.1, 25.6. Just need to take down a little bit of the width there. We'll go ahead and throw our touch mark on it. Into the bandsaw, then into the grinding room. So we've got it ground, it's the size we need, and before we go to the lengths of actually milling our slots and cutting it off, let's have a look at how it looks blued. So we're in our cold ox, we're gonna leave it there about 10 minutes, we're gonna have a look, and if it's good, we can move forward. If it's bad, then we gotta start again for the third time. Let's have a look-see. Oh yeah, that is awesome. Super, super subtle, I like it. And that's a really nice way to transition from the forged material into the, uh, into the more refined stuff. I'm gonna wash that off and give you a look. With a little bit of oil, that's how it looks. 
I think it looks beautiful. I think it's a beautiful way to transition from a little bit of forge into a little bit of ground. This will end up being cut probably right about here. So it's gonna be a third forge, two thirds ground. We gotta do some milling on it though, but we're gonna leave that until tomorrow's episode. So make sure that you hit the subscribe button so you can stay tuned. I'm gonna get started on filming that right away because as you can see from the light above us, tomorrow for you is today for me. Hit that subscribe button. I'm gonna get cracking making tomorrow's video for you. Make sure you go grab yourself some merchandise. We got some fabulous new t-shirts down at the website. That's at the link below. I'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.